Well, a little rainy morning, and we're uh, we're off to uh, off to go look at some other old stuff that I definitely don't need to buy, but something I've been kind of interested in. I like weird stuff, stuff that's a little bit outside the norm, like the Packard, like the Mercedes I built, C50, the panel truck, all them weird things. So but here we go, and off for another day of adventure. Go see what we can find today. We got this Chrysler sitting here running. Pretty cool old car. Some of purring. All right, here's what we came to look for though. Forty-eight Nash. So as you can see, I did uh, end up buying this thing, got it loaded up, uh, wasn't the easiest, this front wheel's locked up. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get a quick video before it possibly rains tonight. It's got, uh, I guess it's you consider a barn find, it was in that guy's barn for six or seven years, he said. Um, this is, like I said, a 48 Nash Ambassador. And what I liked about it was pretty much straight, you know, there's some rust in it, but overall it's pretty much straight. It looks like all the trims there uh, came with, uh, it's got that cool license plate. Um, came with a whole trunk full of parts there's a latch there that works um, over here looks like we've got some uh, extra bumperettes we got some other ignition type of pieces for the engine that's not inside of it got another uh, base to the hood ornament that's pretty cool don't know if the rest of the the girls there somewhere uh, looks like a valve cover it used to be a inline six from what I believe in this box here we got some extra gauges some uh, around the front turn signals it looks like some extra steering wheel pieces uh, they're kind of cool little Nash with a little emblem in them a bunch of other little trim pieces and things don't know why they're in there you know somebody was planning on planning on restoring this thing one day or not this was pretty cool the guy yeah, showed me this thing I uh, don't know how it kind of works or what you do with it oh I think it flips up this has the uh, Nash emblem and if you flip it over it actually even says, it's kind of hard to read there, but it actually says uh, Kleenex tissues. So it's actually a tissue dispenser, which I think he said was probably pretty rare. Get this extra piece of rubber that's kind of by that back uh, fender on the on the passenger side, I believe it's missing. Extra wheel here. Didn't really look underneath there. Another, that's a different style hubcap than what's not on the car. Um, nope, a couple more Nash hubcaps that are pretty cool. Uh, couple uh, carbs once again oh hold the thing of receipts somebody's mail speaker um, over here we got another hubcap got a couple headlight rings looks like a hood uh, or a radio got some more door handles and, and that kind of thing so it came with some other parts it's kind of cool uh, so this guy works push up on that push it just gotta go a little taller. There we go. And I'll come back to that. In a second, I got both hands free. Uh, but here's the car. Overall, uh, <coughs> you know, it's like I said, it's got some crust. Get open it up here. <coughs> we got the uh, suicide rear door, which is cool. Front door. All right. Yep. Looks like your typical mouse orgy, or smells like it. Uh, got cool, cool big steering wheel. Looks like it was a three on the tree, or some type of a manual column shift cars. We got three pedals down here. Um, you know, like I said, we got some crud, uh, some 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 crust, but uh, overall pretty cool car. Back wing windows, uh, you can see up there. The back wing windows even open up. Uh, obviously, headliner's terrible, but that's what we got going on. Um, in here don't have a good way of uh, popping the hood right the second you gotta mess with that but we got your nash emblem 
Got this cool uh, hood ornament lady sticking off. These old cars have the coolest emblems. Um, you know, got some rust here, little things going on around the headlight rings. Um, we go underneath and uh, do a quick look. Let's see, we got, got independent front suspension. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I always wonder if it's easier to go through and I'd like to mess around one time with just replacing um, or building either new control arms or uh, replacing like these down here with like a modern ball joint and uh, switching this over to like a different spindle to get some different, uh, you know, disc brakes and things on it, make it easier. Um, I don't know, something to play around with. No engine or trans as stated. Uh, tons of room in there to put something in though. So, um, you know, I don't know what the plan is. It's either gonna be to uh, clean it up and uh, just put it out for sale and see if I can't make a couple bucks to put towards the Packard or might be uh, one to build later. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, yeah, overall pretty cool car. Guy had a clean title. Um, overall for what he was asking, I thought uh, it would be something worthwhile. Uh, I think it would be a pretty cool car laid out on the ground. Things that I was looking at when I went to look, you know, buy it is little things like this. I know it's kind of dumb, but um, you know, the frame is actually up higher than the body. So if we wanted to try to lay it on the ground or do something with it, uh, you know, one of our lowest parts is this frame shackle, which we'd probably be, you know, we'd be getting rid of anyway, so do like a four link. So there's a possibility if you wanted to go through and try to lay this thing on the ground, you could lay this pinch weld, uh, which would be laying, you know, fender um, all the way down, all the way up to the front. So it would be pretty rad if it was laid out on the ground, um, which, you know, don't really have the time or money to be building this, but it would be cool to do. So it might be something to consider, uh, especially if we uh, sell the T-Bird. So uh, keep, uh, keep, uh, you know, keep watching and we'll see what we do with it.